So welcome to this Mothering Sunday service when we will also be receiving Andy Hart into membership with confirmation and we'll be dedicating our new uh, hymn books as well. We have uh, a prayer to begin with. Let's pray. God, our Father and Mother, we quieten ourselves to be present to ourselves, to you, and to each other. We come as we are, sometimes lost, because we choose our way and not yours, because we make an outward show of your way, but without love, and that is not your way. Thank you for your outrageous love, always and forever welcoming us home. Amen. We have our Lent liturgy for week four. Thank you. <coughs> okay, today on the fourth Sunday of Lent, we're remembering Mary and the symbol is this blue cloth. Among those who were with Jesus at the end of his life was Mary, his mother. She had been told when Jesus was a baby that one day a sword would pierce her heart. This prophecy came true when he died on the cross. Mary was standing nearby with other disciples and must have suffered terribly as she watched her son die. Lord Jesus, we remember those who were with you when you died and who suffered while you were suffering, including your mother. May we too have enough love for you to stick by you, even when things are difficult. Mary loved you as a mother, but may we love you in gratitude for what you went through for us. We sing, Father in heaven. <coughs> Mother's Day. Of course, it originally was Mothering Sunday. I wonder if you like Mother's Day. Yeah. Yes, some do. 
but some don't. Now, some people um, are not happy uh, on Mother Son Mothering Sunday. And we're very aware it does make some people sad. And so if that's you, then we want to say that we are thinking of you um, on this Mother's Day. Now, some people, I keep looking at my phone this morning to see if I got a text from any of my family. <laughs> <laughs>
normally have handshakes, but we've stopped doing handshakes, haven't we? <laughs> to respond to God's love and grace by making these promises. Will you commit yourself to the Christian life of worship and service and be open to the renewing power of God? Will you seek the strength of God's Spirit and you accept the cost of following Jesus Christ in your daily life? Will you witness by word and deed to the good news of God in Christ and so bring glory to God? Members of the body of Christ, we rejoice uh, that this our brother Andy has been confirmed. Will you so maintain the church's life of worship and service that he may grow in grace and in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord? We will. So let us pray. Generous God, touch us again with the fire of your spirit and renew us by your grace that we may profess the one true faith and live in love and unity with all who follow Christ. turn to you and run towards you and you run towards them with your arms open wide to receive them and we pray for all our young people and for those who guide them that you will bless them and draw them always closer to you in Jesus name we pray Amen, Amen. I'm going to hear our reading from Luke's Gospel thank you I'm reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 1 to 3, and then 11 to 32, and I'm reading from the Good News Bible. One day, when many tax collectors and other outcasts came to listen to Jesus, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law started grumbling. This man welcomes outcasts and even eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was once a man who had two sons. The younger one said to him, Father, give me my share of the property now. And so the man divided his property between his two sons. And after a few days, the younger son sold his part of the property and left home with the money. He went to a country far away where he wasted his money in reckless living. He spent everything he had. And then a severe famine spread over that country and he was left without a thing. So he went to work for one of the citizens of that country who sent him out to his farm to take care of the pigs. He wished he could fill himself with the bean pods the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything to eat. At last he came to his senses and said, All my father's hired workers have more than they can eat, and here I am, about to starve. I'll get up and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I'm no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. So he got up and started back to his father. He was still a long way from home when his father saw him. His heart was filled with pity and he ran threw his arms around his son and kissed him. Father, the son said, I have sinned against God and against you. 
I'm no longer fit to be called your son. But the father called his servants. Hurry, he said, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. Then go and get the prized calf and kill it and let us celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he's been found. And so the feasting began. In the meantime, the elder son was out in the field. On his way back, when he came close to the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what's going on? Your brother has come back home, the servant answered, and your father has killed the prize calf because he's got him back safe and sound. The elder brother was so angry that he would not go into the house. So his father came out and begged him to come in. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've worked for you like a slave and I've never disobeyed your orders. What have you given me? Not even a goat for me to have a feast with my friends. But this son of yours wasted all your property on prostitutes and when he comes back home, you kill the prized calf for him. My son, the father answered, you're always here with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be happy because your brother was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. Amen. So on Mothering Sunday, we have a story of a father. But that's fine because the point of the story is about unconditional love and we know that mothers as well as fathers uh, are capable of great love for their children. Luke recorded this parable after the parables of the lost coin and the lost sheep. So obviously Luke was seeing it as the parable of the lost son. Jesus used the parable stories to illustrate truths about relationships between God and people. The way the father ran to meet his son when he returned speaks volumes about the love of God and is eager to forgive and to receive back children who had been lost to their heavenly parent and that but had been restored. Restoration of relationship is what the whole gospel is about. In contrast to the tradition of the day, this son who had rejected his parents and had lived a wild and irreligious lifestyle was welcomed back and even honoured. In contrast to the attitudes of most people today, even many Christian people, someone who's done the worst kind of things is accepted, is not even judged, is shown love unconditionally. What about the other son? <coughs> this week I have been sad to see and hear the judgmental attitudes and narrow-mindedness of people who go to church, who, may, who say they love their father in heaven, but still manage to fall out with each other or upset each other, very much like the older son in the parable. But surprisingly, even these children of God are equally loved, no matter what their attitude. The way the father in this parable speaks gently to the older son shows that he had always loved him too, and that God, our father and our mother, still loves us unconditionally. The point is that God's love like that of perhaps the best mothers and fathers, doesn't depend on what their children do or how they behave. Few, thank goodness for that. <laughs> but actually, are there any children, or adults for that matter, who always behave well? I think not. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. 
So I wonder which of those two sons do you identify with? Don't be offended that I only give you the choice of identifying with either uh, the younger son who lived wastefully, shamefully, dishonorably towards family, or the older son living narrowly, resentful, finding the forgiveness of another hard to stomach. I don't mind putting you all in one or the other category uh, of wayward offspring because we are all wayward offspring at times, are we not? Um, no matter the, what we have done or how, what we have been like, God loves everyone. But I realise that this could rather sound like, in the eyes of God, that it's okay for people to misbehave to be rotten to each other, or even to dishonour God, because God still loves us. Well, you know what St Paul had to say uh, to, those, to the suggestion that God's mercy meant that we could merrily go on sinning. He says, by no means. And surely we don't really want to, because it ruins our relationships with God and with people. Mothering Sunday is a time when relationships are in the front of our minds. For as many as still have a good and current relationship with their mothers or their children, there are as many who will not connect today because of loss, disagreement, distance, or never having known a relationship with them, or for any other, many other reasons. But there is always a longing for good relationship based on love. And though human relationships may cease, there is always the possibility of getting to know the love of God and to return that love and form a bond through faith. When we have discovered the love of God for us, no matter what, we want to start all over again, to try to be like Jesus, who is the model son, to do all that we can to please the one that we love. Just as young people were keen to go back home to their mother churches, and their mothers of course, back in the day when Mothering Sunday was invented, I think about the 16th century. So we desire to return to good relationship with the one who, that we have come to regard as our loving parent. All over the UK, many families will be meeting up for Mothering Sunday today to celebrate the love that unites and restores relationship. Many, of course, will not be able to, to do that. The city in Ukraine that is named after Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mariupol, has been destroyed. Families who live there and in other parts of Ukraine have been separated by the war. Others may be separated from their families, as we said before, by distance or disagreement or, or, de or by death, prevented by work commitments or even just through disinterest. For these, we pray, to be upheld by their memories, their hope of being reunited one day, and that they can know that God is their heavenly parent, mother and father, their loving source who longs for their love to be reciprocated, longs for restored relationship and waits ready to welcome them home with open arms, no matter what. Dear God, Father and Mother of us all, draw your wayward children back to you by your unconditional love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We confess our sins to God. God of the prodigal, 
and the elder sons, we are sorry for the times that we get lost in our world with no thought for others. We are sorry when we use our resources selfishly. We are sorry when we doubt your love and our pride prevents us from admitting our mistakes. We are sorry when we resent your generosity towards others and judge their failures more harshly than our own. We are sorry when we hurt those we love and abuse their trust. Forgive us and help us to find our way home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The words of 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 21 celebrate God's reconciliation work through Christ and challenges us to take up that work of reconciliation as Christ's ambassadors. We're going to hear that reading now. Thank you, Margaret. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we, ent we entreat you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God, to Christ. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. come now to the prayers of intercession. Um, the response, when I say hold all those close to you, please join in the response and give us hope and give hope. Hold all those close to you and you respond and give hope. So let us pray. In the shadow of your wings we sing for joy. O oh Lord, restore us and make us new. God of love, we pray for the softening of our hearts and the opening of our arms, for generosity that welcomes the lost, for our need of your tenderness to restore our failures, for our churches to be renewed in loving and giving, for the courage to lay down our lives for one another, for the strength to answer your call to serve others for a new start. And for Andy, who has made his commitment to you and to this church today, hold all these close to you and give hope. God of love, we pray for all, this, all those who carry the scars of conflict, the external and internal signs of pain endured, for the lost and lonely, the displaced and the dispossessed, for all whose lives have been broken, for those in our own community who are suffering, for all who wait powerless, powerlessly at the bedside of the ill and the dying, for the bereaved, for Marion Stewart and her family as they mourn George's death. Hold all these close to you and give hope. God of love, we pray for the needs in our own communities, for families under pressure, 
for people struggling with rising bills, for people in debt and distress who have nowhere to turn, for all who need to know today that they are loved, for all who are bringing up children amid the pressures of today's world, for the sacrifices that form the fabric of parenthood and for children and young people facing a future full of challenges. Hold all these close to you and give them all. God of love, we pray for mothers who are apart from their children, for all motherless and lost children, for all of us whose mothers have died, for a parent or parents of a child who has died and for children without parents, for all who long for children but are unable to have them, for all the struggles of family life, for children far away from home, for unaccompanied children fleeing, fighting, and for children whose homes are not places of safety and kindness. Hold all these close to you and give her love. God of love, we pray for the people in Ukraine and the places in Ukraine that are now held a litany of despair. For Mariupol, reduced to the ashes of a dead land. For Chernihiv, Kharkiv, Kherson. For Odessa, Melitopol and Kiev. For towns raised to the ground. For communities wiped entirely from the map. For the besieged, the abducted and the starving. For the motherless children in a war zone. For the injured and the dying and for those who weep by their side. Hold all these close to you and give help. God of love, we pray for the places in the world that are torn apart by conflict. For Myanmar, Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan and the Yemen for the hungry and the homeless, for the persecutors and the oppressed, for all who need safety and shelter, for those whose rights are denied, for the places where truth cannot be spoken and where dissenting voices are silenced. Hold all those close to you and give hope. God of love, we thank you for simple pleasures in the midst of challenge and hardship, for lengthening hours of daylight, for people who lift our burdens, wipe away our tears, share our lives and dreams, and call out our best selves. For the faithful presence with us through darkness and light, and for a deeper experience of your love, which shapes us, calls us, rescues us, and brings us home. Hold all these close to you and give her love. In the shadow of your wings we sing for joy, O Lord. Restore us and make us new. Amen. You're not found to notice that we have uh, hymn books on the front here, and uh, there have been occasions when we've not had enough hymn books for everyone, and uh, we had some money left to us uh, in memory of Peter Bedstone, and so we have bought some hymn books, and we're going to dedicate these uh, to God now. Lord, we dedicate. Lord, we dedicate these hymn books um, in the memory of Peter Featherstone, in the name of Christ, as a symbol of our remembering, a sign of our thanksgiving, and an expression of our love. As we use these books to enable us to sing in worship of you, we will remember Peter, his faith in you and his love of singing, with thanks and joy. And we thank you, loving God, our Father and Mother, for all that you have given to us 
all creation to care for, the love of mothers and other people for us, and people to love no matter what, inspired by your unconditional love. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. So thank you. I'm sure we should enjoy using those. And some people like to have a hymn book, uh, even if the words are projected, so uh, they're there for your use. Thank you. We're going to join together in saying the Lord's Prayer together. So let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We receive our offertory. Sing. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's love? Number 345.
make it entirely appropriate that the gentlemen can see the flowers as well today. If you haven't had any, there are still more here. You haven't quite managed to give you some. Thank you so much. Um, thanks, Lucas, for bringing those round to us as well. <coughs> So a blessing for us all. Wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever your strength, whatever your weaknesses, God will be with you to hold, to heal, to guide and to bless. Go then in peace, assured of God's love. Amen. Shall we say the grace to one another? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.